Hey, welcome back guys. So let's do with the migration class so that we are done with all classes here because this is the only one remaining. All right, so the migration class is going to work with this folder here, Thunder, and this item here, Thunder PHP. So Thunder PHP or Thunder is going to be our command line tool. That's what we'll call it. And this is going to help us do things much quicker. So we're going to be using the command line to create things like, for example, a plugin, a new plugin. So instead of you going into the plugins folder and creating a folder, creating the plugin.php file and creating the config.json, on your own even though you can do that and that's fine but it would be much faster to just go to your command line and just say thunder make plugin and then you put the name of the plugin that way it makes a folder for you and makes the appropriate files and classes and folders inside there for a basic plugin that way you work faster and you concentrate on your actual work than doing repetitive stuff in the same way we're going to be using the same to do migrations for example so you can create migration files now for those people who don't know what migration files are a migration file is a file that describes a database table so instead of you just creating tables of databases directly in php my admin uh, that's discouraged because let's see here localhost php my admin this is discouraged here because if, for example, you lose your um, your database file, then you can't reverse engineer. You can reverse engineer it, but it takes a while. So it would be nice to have a description of your database tables within the project itself. That way, you can simply run a command to recreate all tables one time at once. So here what I'm trying to do is let me just grab any table uh, from any. I'm sure you have tables on database tables here in your MySQL. So I just want to grab any of these. I'll go to thunder underscore DB. I'm just grabbing any of these, maybe users table. Oh, in fact, when, when I'm on the database here and there's a list of tables, what I can do is tick on one of these tables and go to here with selected and say show create. So this is going to show me the query that needs to be run to recreate this table. So I will copy this. I'll get everything up to the end there and then just do copy. And let's come here. So you may have a different table. It doesn't matter. I just want the syntax of creating a table. That's all I want to highlight. So let's create a new file and paste that. So this is the command you need to run in MySQL to create a table. So this is a very specific table. So it has very specific columns. But what I need you to look at is just this part here. Create table and then the name of the table, right? and um, the engine and all that down here this is more important and then this part here is how you create a primary key this part is how you create a normal key here and there are other different types of keys to create for example foreign keys which i completely dislike <laughs> so we are not going to be doing foreign key creation in here i never use foreign keys so if you're about that you you'll be on your own you have to do that code on your own Anyway, so the point is, I'm just looking at the basic syntax here. All right, so let's go back to our migration thingy here. And I want to, there's some stuff I had copied here from my previous project, which I want to paste in here. So I want to paste these guys over here like so. So these are private variables that we're going to need to use here. They're private because they're only of use within this class, uh, within the entire class, but not from outside. So the columns variable is where we're going to store column names. Now you will understand how this will work later, 
um, what will happen is that each plugin here so maybe we can do this just for you to have a general idea so within plugins here maybe let's say the basic oath plugin in here I can right click and create a folder and I can call this one migrations even though your command line tool will help you create all of this stuff and then here I can put a new file so whatever file is in here will be considered a migration so this migration file may be called something like uh, create users table like that and then maybe a date this is usually the convention with frameworks like laravel and codeigniter etc so we'll put kind of a date here and say uh, maybe uh, something like this so we have a file in there a migration file and then in this migration file this is going to be a class oh sorry i should have saved it as dot php dot php there we go okay so in here we can create a class uh it didn't recognize it so let me close that and open it again so i want to create a class like that okay so this one will be users migration and it's going to be something like class users extends migration so this extends migration is this extension this is the class we're creating right now it's going to be extended by every migration file we make the reason we're extending that migration file is because whatever functionality we put here we want our migration file to automatically have it that's why we're extending that migration so we could easily just get whatever functionality is in here and paste it in every single one of these migration files but then that would be a waste of space that's why we create a migration here as a class you can change this to trait as well and then instead of uh, extending you can just say use migration that will work just as fine as well so regardless trait class same similar things okay so um what am i trying to explain so in here in users there will be two functions there will be the up function and the down function so this one will be public public function up that's usually how it's done and then we'll have another public function down okay so in the users migration for example this is going to describe the users table okay so we describe the users table in here so you can have as many migrations as you need within that plugin depending on how many tables you want to use for that plugin so you put migration files for each and every table now you don't actually have to have a separate migration file for each table you can actually put all of those in here but it's a bit easier to deal with if you have separate files because then you can choose you can pick and choose sometimes which tables to take and which to uh, leave without having to go into the file and edit it so the up is when you're creating the table this function will run the down is when you are deleting the table when you're dropping the table that part will run so all the functionality we're creating here is just an extension we're extending the functionality of this so hopefully this is making some sense and the beauty of this is whenever you go to a new system you can easily just run these migration files to create the tables or run them again to remove all tables if you want so this is the general idea okay so in here we'll have a few functions one of them will be create table and the other one will be insert now insert uh, this thing will actually yeah insert will work here this thing will extend database like that so extends database the reason we're extending database so we have to use database here let's call it from the core section 
Oh wait, it is already in the core database. So what we want to do is change the namespace of this one to migration. And that's the same thing that will happen here. This one will be inside the namespace migration. Like that. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. So that they are all on the same page. So uh, where, am, where am I? Yes, there will be an insert function. The insert function will be used to... These are all public, by the way. The insert function, will be, this will be used to create uh, the actual table. And this one will be used to insert data. Because certain times, let's say you want to create a user's table, and you find yourself wanting to create that very first um, uh, record, like the admin record, so, so that you are able to log in the first time you create the website, right? So we'll need that. And also, we're going to need a drop function, of course, so that we can drop tables. And that's pretty much it, right? We create tables, we insert data, and we drop tables. This is the only thing we need to do. All right, so when creating a table, we need to create a query. Not so, yes. So let's do this. So the query starts with, this is the, the things we copied. So we're gonna grab this and copy that and uh, wait a minute migration up down I'm trying to think where we are going to let me remove that it's wasting my time I want us to know how we're going to determine the table name here how do we determine the table name so the table name should come with one of these, I'm guessing, because the table name is very specific to a specific, um, hmm, to a specific migration file. But what if there are two or three? Okay, so in that case, what we will do is on the create table, we will expect a string here with a table name. Yeah. I think that will do just fine. Okay, create. I think the same thing when we are dropping a table. We should know what table we are dropping by supplying it in there. Okay, so that works. So to create a table, this is the syntax. So let's grab that and paste it here. So we don't need those backticks. Uh -huh. So it says create table and the table name now, we don't want to replace tables that exist, just in case this is run. We don't want to drop a table that exists or get an error that your table already exists. So we'll put the question, if not exists. Okay, like that. So create table if not exists. Actually, it's create table if not exists, and then you put the table name. Yeah something like that so create table if not exists table name great already that's looking good let's add to the query and what are we adding to the query we are adding this last part over here so I'm gonna grab this copy and let's put it here BAM okay I'll leave a space there cause reasons <laughs> All right, so we have that. So after this, there's an open bracket. Then there's a closing bracket over here. So maybe let's incorporate that. So I'm just going to do close bracket here and open bracket over here. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we're getting somewhere. Now let's put the in between parts here. Now the way we're going to make it is that columns within the migration file, individual migration files here, will be added like this. For example, I'm gonna say this, add column, like that, okay? And then the column name will be, let's say, ID. And then I'll put all descriptions of ID. What is ID? ID is an int, okay? Usually you put of length like that, or if you put 10, 
it's an int it's unsigned unsigned just means it's a positive number we won't be storing any negative numbers the one with a sign is negative so unsigned is positive so add int id int unsigned and then it will be a primary key so we can add all of that in that column there and then we add another column maybe we're just going to call it column one and this one maybe is a var variable character variable characters need length we'll put 100 as a simple test there and then we'll say default value is no like that now this is similar to how things are done with in uh, what's this in laravel you get a lot of uh, what we call method chaining there which i really dislike but you can do it that way if you want you can make um chainable functions where you do something like instead of just typing no there you can just say something like nullable uh, which makes it a no and then you chain that to something like int blah 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 varchar or something and then you put a length in there 100 it's ridiculous anyway other people like it this way but i find it a little ridiculous to do that because it gives you limited options while controlling too much of what you can do and i dislike that i like more freedom so i like it when i can just type stuff like this because then i can move it around as i wish so it's preferences right you can put chaining if you want that's up to you and then we can add more columns here now this is how we add columns so we've seen this already and then maybe there's a second column we can add another one and then finally we can add some keys right so we can say something like add key or uh, yeah we can add a key we can add primary key if we want maybe you don't want to put the primary key over here you can do this and then you can say add primary key over here and primary keys id like that and just a normal key maybe on column two let's add the most basic stuff like things that are usually required we have date created and this one is in form of date time and the default value is no that's fine and then there's date updated and dates deleted if you are doing soft deletes that's up to you if that's what you want to do because sometimes uh, you can set up your website to not completely delete files you just do soft deletes where you said you set an integer that says this this record is deleted so in that case you would have a deleted column like this which is tiny int i guess uh, one value like that and the default value could be zero because zero means not deleted one means deleted uh, you can have other columns like disabled deleted etc etc so this is uh, the basics right as an example so you add those columns and then you add a primary key you add key most likely deleted will need an index so these are indices you're adding uh, also something like date created you can put indices on those so they could be unique key like we have here you see full text key unique key foreign key primary key and just key uh, keys and so on yeah very good so and then when we want to drop the thing we just say this drop and then we put the table name uh, wait a minute uh, once we are done with this actually we have to do this create table and then users like that okay and in the same way we'll grab this put it there and then change that to drop all right so this is a migration file this is a single migration file this 
imagine this is like describing the users table only right and then when we run this migration it's just going to run the it's just going to run the class and run this function here depending on what we want to do either if we want to create a table we run this if we want to remove the table we run that now these are functions we need to create because this and there's a function called add column but we don't see that add column function here now since every migration will use the add column function then we will add it to this part here as you can see so let's add those functions here these are public functions because they are being accessed from the outside so add column and then here we'll expect a string of uh, column right column description or something so that description of the column so all we are doing here is just adding columns to this uh, array over here that's all we just add it to that array so we're just going to say this uh, column columns it's columns and then since it's an array we'll just say is equal to whatever we've supplied there like so now instead of column here so that i can copy this properly uh, pff, what can i do you can call it a string can i uh, let me leave it like that okay that's fine so same thing we need a function for each one of these adding a key data so there's one two three four five six seven right uh for now i won't do the foreign i won't do the foreign keys like i said i'll leave it there because you can add the code to that if you want i don't know how foreign keys are added you can if you want to know you can just create a table with foreign keys and then you do the show create then it will show you the create query and then you can see how the the foreign key was added so it's as simple as that i'm just too lazy to go into it so add column add keys add data as well <clears throat> so let's put these one two three four five six uh let me ignore these three for now so let's just do one two three four so one two three four mm -hmm. So add column, add the key, add uh, primary key, add data. Okay, great. So columns, mm, key, okay. Uh, primary key uh -huh. data we're just gonna call it data this one doesn't have pure here so data data okay that does it so we add all these things to the array and then once we are done at the end here we will run the query so i'm just going to save this now remember that this has a query function because it extends database so then we're just going to run that query that's all and it doesn't have any variables so that's fine then after we run that query we reset every one of these guys to emptiness right so let me grab these and just change that to this like so and then empty all of them just to make sure that they return to empty okay so we empty them once we run every query that we run we empty them and then we wait for more adding of that data so that's fine and then to drop the table we'll just run a query simple as that query is always simple it's just to drop table and then table name actually that's it <laughs> and then we run the query function and just put query there like so okay so drop table whatever drop table that is 
All right. Um, what else am I remaining with? Okay, so in the middle here, we want to create the query. This query is incomplete. So the first thing we want to do is merge all the columns, right? So the columns, remember, they are like this. D, ID, unsigned, and then there's a comma. If you look at the create thing, this is how it works. ID, not, no, increment. Oh, I forgot auto increment here. So <laughs> always forget that one. Auto incremento. Increment. Okay. Hopefully that's the correct spelling. I can just copy this guy. Why am I suffering like this? I like uh, small letters, so I'll convert case to lower. So auto increment, great. So if you look at all of these, these are the things that are added in the middle here, separated by a comma. Okay, so those are the things added here up to this point here. Then the keys are added down here. So we can create something here. Um, where am I? Who am I? Okay, there we go. So uh, we will concatenate the query and say query dot equal to. And here I just want to implode and put a comma in between. So we are imploding this uh, columns like that. So what implode does is that it gets an array and push puts all those values into a string separated by whatever string you put here. So a comma, that's exactly what we are looking for here and great. So we just need a comma at the end to add keys now. So if I come down here, wait, migration. So we implode and then we add a comma at the very end. Okay, cool. And then now we're going to implode any keys. So query dot equal to, and actually I should have just copied this. Uh, implode primary keys now. Yeah, we implode primary keys. And the text in there is going to be, where is this? It's going to be primary key and then the name of the primary key. So usually the primary key is just like ID and then there's a comma. So in this case, it's just gonna be like this, but we want to put primary key as part of the text and then a bracket. So uh, let me come here. So here we want this, not just in between, but even at the beginning. So here I will do this. We're gonna say primary key and then open bracket. Wait, 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 that might not work. Okay, yeah, that might work. So open bracket and then, uh, wait, 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 wait. At the end before the comma, there should be a close bracket. Okay, and then in between here, when we implode, uh, which is between these, there's going to be, hmm, can this even work? Okay, we're going to see if it's going to work anyway. So the middle part will have a bracket like this, comma, and then more text saying primary key and then open bracket, right? Something like this. Eh, hopefully, this is the middle part. This is gonna be the middle part of every text, right? In that beginning there, and then a closing. So I hope that works. Uh, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. Same thing with key. Now key is special because we want to put key in the middle there and then key in there as well. So key, the name of the key and the column that we are keying. So how do we make that? You know what, let's just use, uh, let's just use loops here. So what I'm gonna do is for consistency, right? I'm gonna say for each and I'll say this primary keys like that as key and value. So we don't really need the key here. We just need the value itself. 
and I'm gonna call this one as a key like that and what I'll do is I'll just add to the query so I'm gonna say query dot equals and this is gonna say primary key let me use double quotes so I can put variables in there so I'm gonna say primary key then open close bracket then put the key in there like so I think this is easier to visualize than this okay so we loop through that and now what I want to do is duplicate this a couple of times um, leave more space so I want one for this is the primary keys the columns are here the primary keys the all the other keys here uh, primary key key unique key full text right so full text I think just goes like full text and then um, unique hmm is it I'll confirm these uh, okay and this one is just key okay so keys sorry keys uh, this one is unique keys and this one is full text something like that okay uh -huh. so at the very end of it there will be a comma at the end which we don't like so what I'll do is I'm just gonna do query is equal to let's trim that out and what we are trimming is from the query and we are trimming a comma okay so once we are done with that that's so good we remove the comma and then we can run the query now uh, we can put if not exists here if exists okay drop table if exists yeah I almost forgot that part uh, yes what else what else what else we run the query here great and we need to echo something because this is going to be running the command line so I need us to be able to uh, to know what has happened like that created successfully now here let's put an if statement if not empty this columns because we need those columns to be there if they are not columns we shouldn't run this at all so I will grab all of this and tab it in remove that closing brace and put it here I'll duplicate this let's put that closing curly brace and uh, we just say column data not found could not will not create table and then the table name something like that okay great great uh, we can do the same thing here do an echo what have I copied okay so that should do it yes yes Mm hmm so the only thing I'm not sure about is unique keys and full text so all you can do to figure this out is this uh, let's go to the same users table right 
And if I go to the structure here in PHP my admin, I can go to you see slug here. Uh, let me add a bogus column here. Let me add two columns that I don't really need. So I'm gonna say go. And uh, I'll call this one call one and this one call two. And these guys, I just wanna give them unique keys. So length, I'll leave them as, um, as they are here and I'll hit save. So we have those two fake columns here and I just want to add a unique key to column one. Okay. Add unique key call outer table, duplicate entry column zero. Okay, so the reason is that there are records already. So if I go to my users uh, thingy here, let me go to structure. Uh, so the key did not allow. Okay, let me put a full text one on this one. Oh, I can't because it's not variable character. Okay, let me change column two, sorry, to variable character. Oh, let me just change it to text so I don't have to type the length value. So I'll put text there and save. Why is length 11? <laughs> anyway, so if I click on full text, then I can make full text for column two. And then if I go to the same table, go to browse. So there are two records here, right? Now I want to just make them unique. So there's zero and there's one here value. That way when I go to structure, I can add a unique key there without getting an error. So unique key. Okay, great. So this one has a unique key. As you can see here, there's column two with full text, column one with BT tree. Is it unique? Yes. Okay, so now if we go back to the database itself, now you can do this on any database. I, it doesn't have to be this, this specific one. Whatever databases you have in your phpMyAdmin, you can do this stuff. We're just trying to see how it's, how it would run a create query on this. So if I say show create now on this one, I'm just curious to see how um, column two is displayed on the keys. So as you can see here, it's unique key, the name of the column. Oh, that's what I forgot there actually, guys. Sorry about that. And then the, where is column two? Yeah, so column two is just full text key. Ah, okay, so it's full text key, unique key. Those are the two things I wanted to see, that's all. So let's come back here. So these guys need to have key at the end, like this. And also, uh, I need to have the same key name here repeated. It's not really necessary because if you don't give it a name, it will give it the same name here. So maybe we can leave it be. I'm not really sure at this point. Let's just do that. I think this is enough, so let's not complicate things. Primary key, because it's possible to give your key name uh, a different name to its column name. But if you do this, I think it will just give it the same column name as the key name. Okay, so those are the things I wanted to see. And this, 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 done. Everything seems O. A okay, except for the insert function. So we need that insert function there so we can insert some data. So there's also add data. Did we do that? Okay, we did that. That's great. Okay, so that's, that's the one that will use this. So the insert function will be quite easy to make. So first of all, let's just uh, check if the data is not empty. So we're gonna say this data, but then if it is empty, let's echo something. So we're gonna echo something here, uh, row data or something, could not,
we can say no data inserted in table and then table name okay great then let's echo a success in this section here so data inserted successfully in table and then we have the table name let me remove that over here all right great so here we expect a string and the table name oops okay so what we do now is a for each loop so we loop through the data the data array so this is not a sh oh it is a string okay if not empty string data and this guy should be an array so we should make sure that is array okay good so we have a row of data in each of these we don't care about the key so data as row so we have one row here and what we're going to do is this the query we create a query query is very simple to insert we say insert into and then we propose the table name and then here we put uh, column names and then we put the values over here now in our case the column names and the values are exactly the same because we are using prepared statements only difference is here we get a full column like this and then um, what I can put here is values string I'm gonna call it that and over here I'll say columns string like that so that will be echoed here that that will be echoed there and that should be enough so once we loop we insert each and every row in here and so we're gonna say this query and then run that query okay like so and of course we will need that row data so add that row here like so okay cool and then uh let's create these strings so the column string will be like this we'll need keys first of all let's grab all the keys from the rows column so i'm just gonna say from the rows array sorry array keys from row rows so we're just grabbing the keys because the data in here will be key value pairs of the row that you want to insert so maybe the admin's name and all that and then we have columns string here let's see let me just copy that why am i suffering column strings is going to be equal to let's implode this since we are dealing with um the only thing difference the only thing in the middle will be a comma and actually it's keys that we are after at this point so let's do exactly the same thing for values a string the only difference is value string will have a full colon here next to each key so that's the full colon we have there as well all right i think that should do it or in case this may be ambiguous to the software let me just concatenate it like that and then put it here okay that actually does it this is all with the insert uh thingy and then we have to empty uh, this data at the very end of it so once we are successful here let's empty it this data is equal to an empty array in readiness for the next table or the next yeah for the next table actually all right this is great this does our migration class completely uh, so the only thing we haven't cut it for is the foreign keys everything else is done but foreign keys eh, I may do it 
tutorial on I may figure it out and try to add one there okay so this users imagine this is our users uh, table so if we run this app function here what will happen is all these things will be added to the column and then uh, primary key add key and all that and then we'll create a table so this will work just fine the users table will be created and then this is how we can drop it so simple and straightforward and so we're going to have many migration files each file corresponds to a table as many tables as we're going to have now these will be inside plugins so which means once you delete the plugin all the migration files go with it as well which is cool because it makes for good cleanup